Here's to you, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> I'm praying, quote, I'm praying this false religion of hate, which is not truly Christianity, which is truly, which is not truly Christian, will be stamped out. <laughs> Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Aren't you a little sweetheart, huh? <laughs> Am I right? This is, this is a comment in, on the previous video. My response to Mrs. Robinson. Oh, it will. When we, the body of Christ, be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, then you can have all your Christian love because God loves you. <laughs> You know, you know, it it, it, it it never fails. It never fails. Whenever a video comes where I'm a little rough around the edges, okay, it never fails. You people who don't like to hear truth, it's like, well, Brad, you could be a little, listen, dude. I, I wrote this in the community section today. Listen, if someone out there, Christian, is diminishing the severity of hell or denying hell, they're preparing you for it. Okay? If someone is going to disregard Diminish the severity, the horror that hell will be for you who go there. That's hatred. That is hatred. But God loves you. If, if you've gone the way that God has elected, the way of the cross, which means death to yourself, Okay, and you were broken of that self-righteousness and take responsibility for putting him on the cross and you get the hell scared out of you and in that moment where all of that is present in one moment. See, you lost Christians don't understand that because, again, you are the deciding factor of what everything is. You are your own standard. You don't get it. Okay? But see, brokenness, contrition, fear happens in a fell swoop when you are on a submarine about to go down and you're seeing the water coming close up to you to suffocate you. That's called hopelessness. Okay? Most of you Christians have gotten to the edge of that. But you have never been hopeless. Why? Because you could do something about it. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm wearing this t-shirt. Okay. I am aware that this is from something that is Pentecostal in its makeup. I got this at the Wally World a couple years ago for under $5. You needed to know that. But I'm wearing this also... Kind of a little rub in your face, okay? Listen, again, dear people. Listen, look at me. You got people who are diminishing the severity of hell, who are denying hell. <laughs> That's hatred. And to preach that to people, to where you people who will do anything you can to justify yourself and your sin are willing to bite on that because it appeals to this. No ambulance like we talked about in yesterday's video. Nobody wants to go to hell. Well, some people apparently do. But you don't want to accept that your loved ones are in hell, right? And because you are taught this premise that God loves you. Listen. Atheists, 
Muslims, evolutionists, can figure out that when you got a Christian that comes around telling you that God loves you unconditionally to someone who rejects Christ and the gospel, that, that, that defies logic, that doesn't make sense, it is stupid, okay? All right, but you Christians, okay? Now, like I was saying, you go the way of the cross and the Lord saves you. God's love is for you, and yes, his love for you is without condition once you are his and belong to him and he seals you. Yes, because like it says in uh, Second Death, by the way, get the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Because like it says in Second Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to what? Dead to what? Dead to what? What are we supposed to be dead to? Hmm? Well, Scripture tells us that we're supposed to be dead to that world. But see, you Christians, got to be like the world to win the world. And you preach a love, you disgusting Christians. You preach a love that is hatred. Why? Because your love has no standard but yourself. Your love doesn't judge because we are supposed to judge ourselves. Your love has no requirements, no required death, no required contrition or fear. Your love is fake. Your love will be pisseth on someone's back as they're about to dive head first off of a cliff. That's your love, Christian. Your love is hate. And see, the enemy is really good at this. Because you got that, like for example, that bald-headed idiot from England, and also that disgusting bloke of Blackpool, who always speak like a dragon, never raising their voice above a whisper. It's a sham. It's a facade, okay? They're smiling at you as they're stabbing you in the back. They're smiling at you as they pisseth upon your foot. God loves you. Okay? All right. All right. And see, the Christianity that is today is engineered to do that. Come on. Atheists. You, do, do, whatever you guys want to think yourselves are, okay? Christianity is a joke. Christianity is a joke. And Christianity on the onset can be actually readily debunked by their logic. Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever watched some of these videos about these people um, confronting the average Christian, okay? <laughs> or, you know, there's some that will go to Catholics, but Catholics are, you know, they're, they're philosophical, they're all about the world anyway. Have you ever seen any of these people confronting the nominal Christian? It's embarrassing. But see, Christian is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay? Oh, uh, Mrs. Robinson, you, you can keep your Christianity. And hey, hey, you know, when you're left behind because you believe and receive, right? Um, I think that that man of sin, the son of perdition, you know, when he goes into the third rebuilt temple and whatnot and saying I am, uh, but before that, even on to that, I believe that he is going to be referring to you who get left behind as Christians. Because, hey, he's going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, according to a lot of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
But what are we supposed to be dead to? Hmm. See, Christians, what they want to be dead to is 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. And it's proved with their, Yea, hath God said, going to the Greek. And again, I have no remorse, regret, or repentance for any harsh things I've said of any of you devils out there who, the Greek, the Greek, this. You can wipe betwixt your buttocks with the Greek. And here. here. Huh. Okay? Go right along now. Hey, if you ever run out of toilet paper, there's your Greek. Okay? They served their purpose to give us this. But see, what do you Christians want to be dead to? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. You know that, that messy little thing called doctrine, which is specific within the dispensation. Uh -huh. There are some that cross dispensational lines, yes. Yes. Okay? For a proof. Oh. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like that. That's what sets you guys off. When you got a saint telling you the truth of Scripture, you don't like it, then you label it as hate. Hate. Mm. For correction. You Christians, you want to, you know, raise your hands up high. God loves you so much. Yeah, put, a, put more money in the tithe offering, right? As you're clapping your hands, talking about baseball and whatnot at your phallus houses. And <laughs> you go, go ahead. Knock yourself out, man. Have a great life. Because this is the best one you're going to have, boy. For instruction in righteousness. Who's righteousness? Who is righteousness? Huh? God's righteousness or your righteousness? Those of you is like, oh, I'm more noble than God because I forgive Satan and love Satan. <laughs> or this is when, you know, this is when you need the church, when you're in blatant sin and can contaminate and infect everybody a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. That's when you got, we're not judging you like in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That's when you need to come to. The, that the man of God may be perfect here in heart. Throughly furnished unto all good works. See, this, that right there is what you Christians are actually dead to. What's the, what's the word of God, Christian? You might say, some of you, well, the authorized version. Good. That, that is true. Here's your question. Do you believe it? Oh, the devils believe and tremble, right? That's true. But do you believe this? Hmm? See, you're supposed to say that you do. But as we're going to see, you profess that you know God. But in works, you know, God saved us onto good works, not works to save ourselves or to stay saved. Okay? You deny him. It is a faithful saying back in 2 Timothy chapter 2. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. What are we gonna what are we supposed to be dead to? Huh? Huh? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. This is not talking about salvation. See, you go the elect way of the cross and are broken, have contrition, and get the hell scared out of you, and in that fell swoop of a moment where those things happen, see, you, 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 you idiot, just believe in and receive free graces. You don't understand that because you have never gone through it. You haven't. It's obvious. It's obvious. There's no fear of God before your eyes. But see, when that happens to you, you can't wait the lesser. 
to the Lord save me. And you free gracers deny brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, and calling upon his name. That that is also a big proponent of the Richlingite. I Richlingite uh, blend of free grace. Okay? Who's that? Go, go find out. Okay, you can find out. All right? And again, Mr. Martin Richling was not the creator of it. But he was a proponent, a major proponent about, what was it? What was it there, buddy? Huh? You're, we're not buddies. But what was it about three, five years ago? Right? Right? When he was out uh, <laughs> humorously harassing the lovely holiness from Maine, right? And all his stuff. Huh? See, some people remember that stuff. Especially about your, your little um, mentor there. And like I said, uh, apparently, as I have been informed, I don't check that guy out at all, uh, the stuff is still there about Mr. Martin Richling. Who's that? Go find out. His blend of easy believism was kind of, at least in the sphere of those who claim to believe the authorized version, uh, it was a catalyst to bring in this, this prayer as a work, repentance as a work, calling on the name of the Lord as the work, you know. Okay, that, that, that was promulgated, not created, because that's from Satan, but promulgated by the Jesuit Martin Rich, Richling, okay? You, you, you two guys, you don't like that someone remembers that. Anyway, in verse 12, it's not talking about denial of salvation. If you go the way that he is elected and he save you and seal you, you can't lose what isn't yours to lose anyway. Okay, that's how that works. But you can lose fellowship. Oh, you can lose your health. You can lose the luxury of a roof over your head. You can lose sustenance. You can lose physical health, mental health. You can lose all kinds of things. But you won't lose what isn't yours to lose, which is salvation. And see, this, this is the thing. When you just believe and receive, <laughs> it's your salvation. Because you just walk it down the street and like, okay, I believe and receive. There I am. You talk about work, Jack. Did every pun intended? But that's not talking about salvation. Verse thirteen. If we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now you and I, we, <laughs> God forbid, we are not little Christs. Okay. That will be in the description box for you. Look, I, I, I understand that majority of you don't uh, that you don't uh, check out the videos in the description box. I, I, I understand that. I get that. But see, when you come around spouting off things that are already explained and examined through scripture in a video in the comment in the, the in the uh, uh, not comment, the uh, description box, and you don't want to look at it, you, you, you lazy bum, okay? You just don't want to hear it. I'll give you this. Okay, I have an annoying voice. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Sure, I got it, whatever, dude. Okay? Or you don't want to look at me. And, um, and uh, apparently one of uh, my brethren... Um, acted upon some things within the last video, they can do that. I have, if, if one of the brethren who moderates when I'm not looking, if one of the brethren uh, removes something and I'm not aware of it, they don't have to answer anything to me because I trust them and I trust their judgment. 
I, I mentioned that to you before. You know, there there have been uh, times where people have left comments, and I'm, I've, I see it on the thing, and I go, it's like, where'd the comment go? Then, you know, I'll go into the thing, it's like we're moved by moderators. Like, okay, whatever. The people, the brethren who do that, have the liberty to do so, and they do not have to go to, well, Brad, I did, fine, I, I trust your judgment, okay? But I did see in the one comment that uh, was taken care of, uh, <laughs> okay, all right, I know I need a haircut, well, okay, I know that, I know that, okay? Petty, kind of petty, but hey, whatever, what do you expect from a Christian? But see, it said there that he will not deny himself. Ephesians 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. That's where Paul is using the analogy of the marriage, about how we, the body of Christ, are married unto Christ. The marriage happens sometimes during, sometime during the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, on the earth, I believe, okay? The when is subject to debate, which we will find out, and so are you who get left behind. But uh, anyway, yes, we belong to Christ. It's not our salvation. It's his. He is our hope. He is the blessed hope. Okay? Right? When you preach, just believe and receive, you are the standard. When you preach against the reality of hell, you are the deciding standard. That is anti-Christ. That is contrary to scripture, contrary to truth, and you poor saps that are gobbling that up. That's, you're being, you are the ones who are being fed hatred. Okay? Okay? You don't, that, and like I said, it never fails. Get emails and some uh, uh, comments. Hate. Hate. You, you're all about hate. Now, we've, we discussed this yesterday and in many videos in the description box of yesterday's video. Today's video, uh, which is kind of a spur of the moment thing, and I'll explain a little later. Um, uh, we're not going to be too heavy in the description box because we've addressed this. I love the Lord, therefore I hate evil. Free grace, as purported by you guys, sleazy believers, it's not the actual grace of the authorized version of scriptures. It is not the true grace of God. You guys preach a license to sin. And you guys that are flippantly um, diminishing the horrific reality of hell, you're preaching hate. You're, you're doing something that is anti-Christ. You're presenting another Jesus and another gospel. And the book that I have in my hands, we're going to look at this, tells us that we are to abhor that which is evil. You know, it's like uh, the, the, uh, the bloke of Blackpool was saying to a brother, I never hate you. I despise you. And yeah, despise is a little bit more powerful than hatred. <laughs> uh, as is loathing. It's a lot more intense than despising. And to abhor is like the extreme of hatred. It's hate. Hate. That it never it it never ceases to amaze me, and it always happens when I'm given a video, and I I fly off the and hey, I'll give you guys this, I I do get off the handle sometimes. Yes, I do. But you know what? 
what was addressed in yesterday's video? I have no regret, no remorse, or no repentance of anything that I said. Especially you guys that go to the Greek to correct what God has said. I repent or regret nothing. You call that hate. You're the one. You're the one who's diminishing, who's flippantly making light of hell. Where people that you are infecting with your nonsense are going to go and burn for eternity. No way out. Oh, they'll get a pause in the action, you can argue, but when they go to stand before the great white throne of judgment to be cast in the lake of fire. You're not getting away from eternal burning. It's like euphemistic language. You change the name of the condition, you change the condition, right? So to diminish the severity and reality of hell is to diminish the reality of it. Woo! You say I'm the one. You say I'm the one who's preaching hate. You call it that because, see, around here, this is the standard. And see, I have brethren who, when, who watch me, watch out for me, and will get on me if I mess up. Okay? Okay? Brethren, the brethren that are within our little thing that we have, our email list and whatnot, uh, like the one dear brother, uh, when, when <laughs> there's something wrong, he's like, Brad. <laughs> he's first, he's like, Brad. Uh, brother Alexander, you know, he'll, you know, he texts me. Or if it's really bad or something, or it's something that needs, that could benefit the body of Christ, then the brethren will put it into a comment, into the comments, like, okay, Brad, this needs to be addressed. It's like, okay, okay, and then you know what they do? They correct me here. See, th th this, this is the standard, not me. Certainly not you, certainly not me. This, this is the standard, the authorized version. Okay? I judge me every day. Every day. I judge me here first. And see, because I judge me first here, I'm going to, I'm going to judge you by the very standard that I myself am judged by. Because, you know, the, the Lord, no one can judge you but the Lord, right? Well, how does the Lord judge you? It's, it's, it's right here. Okay? And see, you, you preaching this unconditional love to the Christ-rejecting sinner is heresy. And you're right. There, Mr. Robinson, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, can't you feel the love, huh? Um, you're right. You're right. This is not Christian. You're right, sir. You're right. This is not Christian. This talks about the way. The truth and the life. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, you want to affix a name to it? The way. Well, there are many things like the way of peace, like the Tao Te Ching, right? <laughs> yeah. The faith that was once delivered. What? Why? Why do you want to ascribe a name to it anyway? That, that, that puzzles me sometimes. It's like, what, do you want to be known just like everybody else? Hate.
Have you ever sat down with a Holocaust survivor before? You ever hear the stories of a Holocaust survivor? Hmm? Hatred toward the Jew, that Ishmaelic hatred toward the Jew as well? Hmm? You ever heard any of their stories? Hmm? What about the hatred that Satan through his church Rome has for the saints. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Hmm? Mm -hmm. See, you, you, you Christians that throw this thing called hate out, you don't really know what it is. Genesis chapter 24. We're going to have a little word examination here. Now, the, according to King James Bible Online, you cannot trust the number they give you because, like, I think it was like 82 verses that the word hate variated with hatred and hateth, but in 82 verses, the word hate will appear, okay? And then you look on uh, King James Bible Online, there's a whole, ver whole bunch of things that uh, go in with hate, hateth, hatred, hatest and that kind of stuff. We're going to concentrate on hate, and we're only going to look at a few because we can get the general idea of what it truly really means to hate. Okay? See, this this is what we do. Okay? And, and when your brethren want to put the Webster's of hate, go right ahead. I ain't gonna, but this is what I, I want you, saint, to get in the practice of. You want to know what a word means? Start here. Start here here in the scripture. Go from there. Use Webster as a checkoff or it's like, okay, see this and then you go to here, okay? Do that. Start with scripture. Start with scripture, okay? So, the very first appearance of the singular hate, okay? Uh, I did not check if hatred, hateth, or appear before the singular hate. I did not check that. Hate, that's the base, okay? Hate, hatred, hateth, hated, hatest, okay? That kind of stuff starts with what? Hate. What's say the scripture? Now, the first appearance, like I said, I ain't check hated, hated, hatred, hateth. I did not check that, okay? Didn't need to. Genesis chapter 24, verse 51 on to verse 60. You guys throw hate out when someone makes you aware of your sin through the scripture or that shows through the scripture that your little satanic movement is exactly that dung satanic movement. Okay? That's when you conveniently throw out the word hate. Genesis 24, 51 on the 60. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him. Ah, I just want, uh, okay, verse 54. And tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning. And he said, send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. After that, she shall go. Now, this is, as I, as I rem recall, this is Laban, you know, who would eventually, with Jacob, give him all that kind of hassle, kind of, of a recompense. You see this kind of mentality. It's like, okay, you can go with, but whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, 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 uh, let's uh, hold back a little bit, you know. Let's dilly-dally for a while, okay? And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. 
And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. Yes, millions is in scripture. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate thee. There's the first appearance of the singular hate. Right there. Possess the gate of them that hate thee. Isaac, the son of promise, unlike Ishmael, the legitimate firstborn of Abraham, but brought about by works, as it were. For an analogy, not by actual works of the law, but God promised Abraham. And Sarah's like, give me a kid. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, and then she's like, going out to Hagar. So they took it upon themselves to fulfill God's promise. And today... There is no greater enemy to the Jew besides Rome than the, that Ishmaelic hatred of Islam. Okay? But the greatest of all the enemy to the Hebraic Jewish people is Roman Catholicism. Okay? So there you see hate. First mention of it. Genesis 26. Now we're going to get into a little bit more of a meatier thing with it here. Genesis 26, 26, verse 26 in Genesis 26, on to verse 29. Come on. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Pichol, the chief captain of his army, still in context with Isaac. Son of promise. In Isaac shalt thy seed, shalt thou seed be called. Okay? God's chosen, God's promise, Isaac. That's why Ishmael hates him. Well, Ishmael was the firstborn. Yes, he was. Okay? That's an argument that Muslims will bring up. They're right on that. Let's see, it's in Isaac. Shall thou seed shall thy seed be called? That's what it is. Excuse me. Shall thy seed be called? Okay? And Isaac said unto them, Now pay attention to this. Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? Hate, separating. They'll cast out your name for hatred for the Lord and separate you from their company? Hate? But yet... Isn't it interesting that these people who actually preach hate, like easy believism, open their legs for everyone to debate with them? Isn't that something? But see, the ones like the saints who adhere to the authorized version, they, they, like, you stay away. It's like, oh, I'll have a debate with you. I'm not going to debate with devils, thank you. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Okay, you run along, be, you know, it's, a, uh, it's summertime, so school's out. So you go to summer school and get your milk and cookies and maybe a little nap, okay? And go along, little boy, all right? Isn't that interesting? But notice that. Seeing ye hate me and have sent me away from you. And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. Check this out. That thou will do us no hurt. Stop. Stop. Hatred. Hate. Separating. It's like, get away from me. That thou will do us no hurt. Think about it. Roll that around in your head. How many, brother, you ever, brother, you ever, you ever encountered this? 
You know, when you're in like a store or something, you're just minding your own and a guy next to you, you know, don't like to go off the appearance, but, you know, if you got pentagrams and stuff on your neck tattooed, that's it. Okay, but they're like, they're scared of you. What, it's like, did I forget? No, I put on pit putty. Why? It's not us, but it's the Lord they're afraid of in you. Why do you think these people, when you come around preaching the truth of the gospel through the authorized version, of course, rightly divided, that, number one, these people show you hate by getting away from you, like, hey, get away from us. Why? It's like when I was putting tracks out at the Catholic Church and that one Hispanic lady was going around taking the tracks off of cars. It's like, you can't do this. It's like, yeah, where does it say that? Yeah, well, you're going to call the cops? I didn't say that. I should have. But I didn't. Okay, it's like, okay, all right. Why, though? Afraid of the truth. The one thing about the devils that you have to at least keep in mind, the devils know what the truth is. And when they encounter someone who is speaking the truth, the tough guys. And of course, of course they would never with their lips. I'm not afraid of that. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Thou believest there is one God, thou do as well. The devils also believe and tremble. See, the devils promote to you one God and three persons, which is Satan, okay? But a saint who comes preaching to Jesus who is. What were these guys afraid of? Isaac was the chosen, chosen son. Chosen. God chose the way of the cross. This is not Calvinism. Okay? You go the way of the cross, the way God chose, whoever you are, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Uh, you go the chosen way of the cross, you become part of the elect, meaning the elect way of the cross, this has nothing to do with satanic Calvinism, okay? Hence, the Lord's in you. You know, they beat the snot out of Paul. They beat the snot out of Jesus. It wasn't Paul that they were trying to beat the snot out of. They were trying to beat the Lord out of Paul and see they're in the fake. The hireling fleeth when he seeth the wolf coming. But a saint, you can beat us, you can torture us, you can do anything you want to us. You're not getting rid of the Lord in us. And see, brethren, that's the thing. That is where the hate begins. Okay? Now, <laughs> let's be honest. Yes, our personalities, <laughs> yes, can help with the function. Yes, it can. Not going to deny that. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. Be honest here. But at the root of it, let's read this again. 26 unto uh, 29. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Pekol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, comma, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. Get it? And we said, Lest there be now, Let there be now an oath betwixt us, even between us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou wilt not that thou wilt do us no heart hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. You see that? Now granted, granted our personalities can help, you know, I, I Let's be honest, okay? 
Okay, I, yes, my personality rubs some of you raw, even our, my brethren and sisters. Yes, it does, okay? But we're brethren, okay? You, you hate me, you gotta love me because we got the same father. Okay, see, in that context, dear friend, that is where God's unconditional love is present within those within whom he resides. Okay? There are brethren out there who I don't like. There are brethren out there who do not like me. But if they came here, like some are coming tomorrow, more on that in a bit. Um, they're brethren. I love you. You're my brother. You're my sister. I might not like you. You might not like me. But when push comes to shove, at the end of the day, who is my brother? Who you are because you say you are. You are because you just believe in me. No, you're not. Paul gives us the example of, you know, when he says in Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul gives us the example. Go figure. Go figure. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just one, verses 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, as we already looked at, if we be dead with him, like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, what are we supposed to be dead to? Dead unto the world. Crucified with Christ. Paul is saying, who saved? I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who's really saved? Who's dead with Christ to the world and to themselves? Who? And when you have, go to the Greek. When you have, hell doesn't exist. Or it's soul annihilationism. When you have, just believe and receive. When you have, go to the church that Christ founded. When you have, you're elect because of your skin color. Or whatever nonsensical, satanic doctrine that you want to throw out there. Christ and him crucified. Hmm. Paul's saying, who's saved? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Okay? Genesis 50 now. Now check this out. Genesis 50. Like I said, we're, we don't need to go over all of these, but what we saw in Genesis 26 about being separated. Why? Because the Lord was with Isaac, and it's like, lest you do us hurt. Ah. You know, I don't fret men at all. <laughs> I, I don't. And... You know, when someone doesn't fret me at all, good for you. Good for you. But see, the Lord that is in me is what these guys fear. Brother, sister, the enemies fear the Lord who is in you, not you. Unless you're ugly like me. Yeah, right, man? <laughs> right, some of my enemies, you know? Yeah, yeah, Brad, you're pretty ugly. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Okay? But see, it's the Lord. It's the Lord that they fear. Not you. Not you. I've seen that. Oh, I've seen that. No, no, granted, again, I don't fret men. Okay? You're not going to intimidate me with posturing, even if you take a swing at me, okay? This jaw can take a punch, okay? <laughs> but, I mean, you're not going to intimidate me. You know, when the, kid, the kid's over there with the, the, the kid with the gun in his belt, you're not going to scare me. Okay? All right? I'm going to have to give an account of myself to the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, at the judgment seat of Christ. That's enough fear for me. Okay? <laughs> All right? That I'm going to have to give an account to him for everything I said to you. That That's enough fear for me. Okay? I don't got time to fear you. All right? And see, that spirit of Antichrist that dwells within you, Christian, I do. How can God be a just God 
if hell is not eternal. How can God be God when he forces you into salvation? How can God be God when it's you who do your own saving? See, God doesn't want a robot. That is a God of coercion. It's weird because the God of Calvinism who coerces people into salvation or to, into damnation is taught in a veiled way amongst a lot of Christians. Hmm. Very interesting. Genesis 50. Now remember what we looked at in Genesis 26. Separating, separation, hate. Why? Because... The Lord was with Isaac, and it's like, lest you do us any harm. So they separate you because the Lord is in you because they're afraid of the Lord. But yet not in the context of salvation. The devils also believe and tremble because they know on with whom they actually serve. And see, that's the thing. See, brother, a lot of the people, um, the higher-ups, the guys who are teaching this nonsense and stuff like that, uh, these are the guys who know and have made their choice, okay? So, they're a little bit more inclined than, say, their uh, twofold more the child of hell that you run into. And those are the ones that are, you know, get a little grievous, okay? Genesis 50, verses 13 under 21. Check this out. Now this is the burial of Israel, Joseph, and the aftermath. Those who know, don't know the backstory, why? Joseph. Oh, excuse me. Uh, not Joseph. Jacob, the burial of Jacob. Okay, not Joseph. Did I say Joseph? Excuse me. Yeah. This is the aftermath of the burial of Israel, Jacob. Okay, excuse me if I misspoke. Okay. But Joseph was separated from his brethren. He had dreams. He went down. They sold him to the Ishmaelites. You know, they, they threw him in a pit, uh, took his coat of many colors, put blood on it, gave it to Jacob. Jacob's all broken up, and he goes down to Egypt, and then the Lord used that for, for this. Okay, that's the backstory. If you don't know that, why? Genesis 50, 13 on the 21. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for possession of a burying place for Eph of Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren, the one who got rid of him, saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us. What were they basing this on? Guilty conscience, obviously, but greed. And will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. Don't get ahead of me. You're thinking of Deuteronomy and Romans 12, aren't you? Don't get ahead of me yet, brother. So, look at this. Hate us. And will certainly requite, get even, us all the evil which we did unto him. Hmm. So, there we see another aspect of what we saw in Genesis 26, okay? These were the chosen, these were Israelites, okay? Yes. Joseph, you know, he had visions and dreams, okay? All right? They knew the Lord was definitely with Joseph. They were afraid of him. Especially since Joseph became one of the high, higher ups in Egypt at that time under a good Pharaoh, okay? 
And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, By the way, verse 16, they're lying. Prove it. Show me anywhere besides this. Only reference where Joseph or where Jacob said anything to any like to his sons. You have when Jacob blessed his sons. Yes, we have that. But nowhere else besides this one reference do you have where they say, thy father. And note how they say, thy father. Why not our father? Don't miss that. They were afraid of Joseph. They sent him away because of his dreams. Remember? If you don't know that, why don't you? What are you reading? Okay? But they sent Joseph away. They were afraid of him. The Lord was with Joseph. Absolutely. you got to remember, this is the patriarchal period. Similar to today, but in no way identical. Death, burial, and resurrection had, didn't happen. They were not looking forward to the cross. And the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident within the believer yet. Okay. So it's totally different. But yet similar things. Okay. And remember, there was an element of required obedience in this period too. Because if Noah didn't, <laughs> things would have been different. If Abraham, if Abram, who would become Abraham, didn't. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. But verse 16 they're lying. Show me where Jacob said that. It's like, okay, guys, come here. Come here. When I die, you go and tell Joseph to forgive you guys. Okay? It's not in there. They're afraid of Joseph. See, our Lord tells us, don't fear them that can kill the body. That's all they can do. But fear him that which is able, not that he will, able to destroy both body and soul in hell. He's able to. He doesn't. Okay? He can do that. But he doesn't. Why? Because God's a just God. Okay? Your rejection of him necessitates by his righteousness your eternal damnation. To those he gives eternal life to who go the way he's elected, the way of the cross. And see, it is anti-Christ when you come around denying, flippantly denying and minimalizing the horror of hell that awaits these people who you're deceiving. And you say, I'm hateful. So shall you say unto Joseph, forgive I pray thee now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants, of the God of thy father. Thy father again. Why not our father? Don't miss that. Okay? That's someone like Samuel. Yeah, pray to thy God. That's an, un, that's an omission of guilt. They admitted their guilt. But see, they lied to him. Find this where J Jacob said this. Find it. You can find where his, how he blessed his sons, but find where Jacob said this specifically, besides right here, according to what they said. Who sent him away in the first place? Okay. Anyway. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Well, if you're a sleazy believist, or a, or a Unitarian, or a Catholic, or a Pentecostal, or a Calvinist, Lutheran, whatever, or King James Bible believing Christian, okay, whatever you are, yeah, I guess you are. Just believe and receive, huh? Up the dosage, buddy, okay? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. Look at this. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. There's a good picture of uh, forgiveness. There's a good picture of forgiveness. 
See, Joseph had every right to hold a grudge. And by the way, any of you, any of you twits that say today forgiveness is required in order to be forgiven, free gracers get that one right. That's a work. That's, that's crazy. No. Show me where that's required during the patriarchal period. Show it to me. Show it to me. Show it to me. Forgive, or, I'll, or I won't forgive you. Show that to me. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll pin it in the comment section or whatever, okay? Anyway, that's a good uh, picture of forgiveness. Joseph had every right to requite. Every pun intended there. Now go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verse 31 on to verse 40. Okay? Brother, forgive and forget. But don't put your foot near the fire to get burned again. Dude. Please don't do that. My, my heart can't bear the sight of it. When that viper come back and bites you again. Don't do that, man. Forgive and forget. Amen. Amen. Because you, know, you don't forgive today. You're not required self-ethically to forgive today. That is a lie. Okay? Free gracers get that one right. Okay? They do. Usually. Um, if you don't forgive, it's going to mess with your insides. Your, your testimony is going to be shot. Your fruit's going to stink, man. It's not a uh, self-ethic requirement. As it will be during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Okay? We've talked about that. All right? But... Deuteronomy 32, 31 and 40. For their lowercase r rock is not as our capital R rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Just believe and receive. Prayers are work, repentance is a work, calling on the name of the world, name of the Lord is a work. <laughs> Ah, uh, did you, you don't hell hell you just go there to burn for a little while so you can eventually repent to go to heaven, and, and and the lake of fire you go to the lake of fire and just burn up for a little bit and then that's it because God loves you, He's weeping that you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, are even our enemies themselves being judges? Think about that separation because they know that the Lord is in you and they fear you fear you no they fear who lives within you see our enemies themselves being judges don't miss that one brother for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the grapes of Gomorrah their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Yeah. Bitterness. Fake. Fake people. Yeah. Yeah. Their wine is the poison of dragons. That old serpent. You know, the, the dragon, Satan. Yeah. And the cruel venom of asps. Like I mentioned to you yesterday about Cyclone B, apparently the, one of the key ingredients was venom from apparently the asp. Okay, check that out. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Hey, Christian, this is your hour in the power of darkness. Just believe and receive, buddy. Yeah. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are the little G gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Hold, hold, hold your place there. Hold, hold your place there. 
Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Where's your God, huh? Like we talked about yesterday, we're going to see, everybody's going to see what Satan looks like. You're going to be amazed, I think, because he's going to be very beautiful. And yes, he, Satan is a he. You know, we saints who get redeemed, caught up, you know, judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be with the Lord when he's judging everybody, okay? But, all right, John chapter 10. Oh, verses 10 on to verse 13. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth them. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Where is your God? Hmm? Oh, he'll be here during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, you're one God and brrr, three persons. Yeah, Satan. Satan. Okay, we, we proved that. You're a little, you're a little disgusting satanic trinity. Okay, it's in the book of Revelation. Yeah, it's Satan. Let's continue in Deuteronomy 32. Verse 38. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am He. There is no God with me. Oh, gee, there, of course. I kill. I make alive. I wound. I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. And of course, Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12. See, under the law, there was no eternal security. Don't believe these idiots when they tell you that there was. There wasn't. Okay? Eternal security is for this dispensation specifically and for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's it. Okay? That's it. All right? Kingdom of heaven is all works. Don't, do, do, don't believe these people when they tell you it's by grace through faith. Doing the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Doctrine for the kingdom of heaven is the Sermon on the Mount. And see, the faith there was in him as king, not in his death, burial, and resurrection. Because they weren't looking forward to the cross. Okay, let's continue. Romans 12, Romans 12, 9 to 21, the close. Let love be without dissimulation. What's love? Uh, hate the sin, but love the sinner. But yet, God hated Esau. I'll let you figure that one out. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hate. Job, therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Paul, you're right. Hate only appears one time in the Pauline epistles. We should look at that. We will. But hold on. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. What is evil? It's contrary to this, it's evil. It's contrary to this, rightly divided. By the way, it's evil. Cleave to that which is good. What's good? <laughs> hey, Christian, what's good? God, what God are you talking about, buddy? The one with the God and the third one in the middle. Yeah, use your imagination. Hmm? So I've made myself very plainly known about this. To hell with your trinity. To hell with the God of the trinity. Because the God of the trinity is not the God of scripture.
Be kindly affection one to another in brotherly love. Talking about fellow saints. In honor preferring one another. Paul, who's saved amongst you? We already looked at it. Okay? Don't consort or hang out, as it were, with people who aren't saved. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Okay? See, we are in the world. We're not of the world. We are to go to those in the world to preach to them things that are not of this world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And we don't become the world to win the world, Christian. See, that? that's where you guys blow it. Anyway. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, and uh, the Lord Jesus is our hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Oh, thank you for persecuting me. No. You're persecuting me. You know, unless you repent of your self-righteousness and go the way that God has chosen, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. See, giving them truth when you're being persecuted, being persecuted, that's a blessing to give to them in that persecution. Truth is a blessing. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Hold your place. Proverbs 26. Recompense, read that verse again. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Well, what's another way to put this? Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. I believe it's verse... Uh, what is that, brother? 4 and 5? Proverbs 26, 4 and 5? Yes. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest I'll be like unto him. <laughs> I got you to fall up. Uh -huh. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Back to Romans 12. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Christians will take this verse and they say compromise truth for the sake of getting along. You can go to hell. You can go to hell. Com uh, you're ashamed of the Lord, he who's ashamed of me, and my words, I will also be ashamed of him. Just Brad eyes that. So compromise truth so you and another lost person can get along. Compromise truth that you and a supposed brother can get along. And that's exactly what Christianity does. Compromise truth in the name of Christian, Christian love. <laughs> Disgusting, man. Your Christian love, huh? Christian love. Christian love. Your, your love is hate. Your love is hate. Don't give me that. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, we already looked at this, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be, over, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. If your enemy hunger, feed him with truth. If he's thirsty, hey, the sincere milk of the word. Exodus 20. 
Exodus 20. Ten Commandments. Gotta keep the commandments. No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't have to keep the commandments today to be saved. Be right with God or anything or stay saved. That's that's heresy. The law is not heresy. No. Uh, keeping the law today is is. You don't have to keep the law today to be saved to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Exodus 20, verses 1 and verse 6. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, you can argue to the to your blue in the face, chartouche in the face. He's talking about physical idols. Dude, a physical idol is always the extension of the true idol, the one who is worshiping it. Jingle all the way, buddy. Okay? Idolatry begins with what? What what begins with that? What what's the genesis of idolatry? Do we need to go to Genesis 3 again? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And verse 4. Okay, I am the Lord that God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 4, clearly, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Separate themselves and are afraid of him. And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You know where he says uh, graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is that, or that is in the earth beneath? Uh, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. See, idolatry is the extension of the true idol yourself. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to 25, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 19, 12 on verse 18. This one's interesting. Check this out. Check this out. Leviticus 19, 12 on verse 18. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane thy name, the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. First uh, John chapter two. First John chapter two. Oh, you know it. First John chapter two, verse nineteen. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. We seek your God like you do. Like it says in Nehemiah. And they're like, hey, get out of here. You have nothing to do with our God. And what do they do? They trouble the guys in working. They send counselors to, to combat what they're saying and everything like that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. It's like I told you, don't, don't skip that one, brother. Second Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. 
Lord knoweth none that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ departeth from iniquity. What is the name of Christ? Jesus. Christ means anointed one, by the way. Which Jesus? So, swear by his name falsely. Which Jesus do you follow? Oh, one God and three persons? God who has no requirements? Loves you unconditionally? Doesn't get angry? Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. Curse the deaf. Can't hear. Blind obviously can't see. Blind leading the blind. Having itching ears, people. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Ah! You judge others. Do you judge yourself? Huh? Judgment begins at the house of God, dear friend. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not, pay attention to this, Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. God loves you. Just believe and receive. <laughs> Repent and be pictes. Tail bearer. Tall tail. Yeah. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Who's my brother? Who's my brother? Who's my brother? Christian brother. Yeah. Yeah. And who's my brother? Yeah. I see you. You are because you say you are, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Paul, who's saved? Uh, who has Christ crucified within them? Okay. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. And see, what happens is, the saint comes around telling you people that, hey, this stupidity, this universalist nonsense, that's, a, that's satanic. Easy believism is satanic. Rome is Satan's church. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, what happens? You don't, you don't like that. You like the lie over the truth. 2 Corinthians 12, 14 and 15. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. See, they seek you so that they may glorify in your flesh. It's like, ha, 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 we got another one. We snagged ah, another one. That's in Galatians 6, I believe. Go find it. Brother, put that in the comment section if I forget. I might, I, never mind. If you see that in the description box, uh, uh, never. You know who you are, who I'm talking to. Okay? Let's continue. But we don't seek yours, but you. Well, I just lost my place. <laughs> 1450. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. They seek yours, your praise, your devotion, okay? So that they may glory in your flesh. 
We seek you to show you the true Lord and the way of salvation. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. <laughs> and see, there it is. There it is. There it is. You, you start telling people about the sin, the sins of uh, Christianity, that it is sin, exposing it for what it is. They don't like that. And they say, you're a hater. You don't know what hate is. Well, you, you kind of do because you're preaching hate. Preaching just believe and receive. Preaching to go to uh, the church that Christ founded, that you're elect because of your skin color or whatever nonsense. Or don't worry about hell. That's hatred. That's hatred. You're, you're the educated one. You can't figure that one out, huh? I wonder why. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And this we see all over. Now, uh, verses 1 on to verse 5. This is where you go to prove to people that the Old Testament dietary restrictions have been resolved. You go here. It's not rise, Peter, kill, and eat. No, that isn't. That's not where you go. You go here. Okay? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What, 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 what could be a more bigger doctrine of a devil than ye shall be as gods? And in ye shall be as gods. Hey! Yeah, don't worry about hell. Ah, hell. You just go there for a little while and then puff. You, hey, you're going to go there, but don't worry. It'll be good because then you'll go to heaven. <laughs> and just believe and receive. You don't have to check. You probably should, but don't worry about it. You just save yourself by your belief. Go ahead. Live it up, man. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, get on your live stream and uh, get drunk and talk about oral sex and, and uh, cuss like a sailor. Yeah, Christian, God loves you. You deal with your Christian love. I've, yeah, I see. I know what your Christian love is. So how with it? And guess what? That's where it's going. As, as you're saying, God loves you to a guy who's going to go headlong off of a cliff and die. And you call us the saints, the haters. To you, sure. Because the scriptures are exposing your stupidity. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. You Im immediately think of Catholic, but that's present in Buddhism, Shintoism, forms of Taoism, okay, forms of Hinduism, okay. This, uh, what, 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 what is that thing? Um, forbidding to marry, uh, the, the, uh, it's a modern thing uh, I heard about. Where they go their own way, something like that. A anyway. Rome is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Yes, but this encompasses, even some forms of Islam have that, okay? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. I don't get why you guys don't like pork. And it's always pork. It, it is. It, it's like they, they, they don't like back bacon, eh? They, they, don't, they don't like pork chops or ground pork or, or, or whatever. They, they, I don't get it. Whatever. Y'all you, you, missing out. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And this is what this, that idiot from England did. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. See, he took this and twisted it to try to uh, defend his satanic doctrine, his Jesuitical doctrine, by the way. I totally believe that guy's a Jesuit coadjutor at the least. Uh, he came to this to justify his teaching to love Satan when context is talking about the food thing. Verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. 
That's why you pray over your food. Before or after, it doesn't matter. Just, hey, Lord, thank you for letting me eat pork. Praise you. Okay? And uh, First Timothy, First, uh, not First Timothy, Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verses 10, on to verse 16. Not Philemon. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Some heretics will go to that and try to twist that into hatred of the Hebraic Jewish people. What is being talked about, they of the circumcision, those who are trying to get people under the law, like Mark the Messenger, and guys like that, like Eric Lionheart, uh, you know, and, and many others. Uh, you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. That's, you know, that is in the law of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? So when it says they of the circumcision, the circumcision is representative of the law. Someone that comes along like in Acts chapter... Doug, read Acts 15 today if you have any questions about keeping the law today or not. Read Acts 15, okay? But it's talking about those who are preaching, hey, you got to you gotta get circumcised and keep the law of Moses and believe in Jesus. No, not today whose mouths must be stopped. The Greek. The Greek. Hey, Mr. Robinson, that's what offended you, huh? The Greek. Well, you're a Greek scholar, huh? You're your own God, huh? You know, when you, you, you and I talked, and you sent me an email before, uh, but, you know... <laughs> Hey, hey, dude, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pu purposely pushing your button. Hey, brethren, if you see Mr. Robinson respond in this video, leave him alone. I'll deal with it, okay? Leave him alone. Eh, but if he's, you know, getting out of hand, I trust your judgment and whatnot. Do what you got to do. But, you know, if you want to respond, go ahead. Go ahead. I'd like to know, actually. I'm not going to ask you in the comment, but uh, I'd like to know. Do you have to go to the Greek? To correct what God said? <laughs> anyway. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses. Teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. I think about Praise He Isn't. Who boasts about how people are giving him, his, him money in his live stream. And the guy is profane, disgusting, and revolting and a heretic. Free grace it too, by the way. Okay. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Cretans. That's a kindred. Scriptural evidence that there are certain traits of kindreds out there that are specific to that kindred? Oh boy! It's right there, man. Continue. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn away from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but their mind and conscience is defiled. You believe in one God and three persons. You do not believe in the true God. Symbol. You say you believe. You believe in the one in the middle, right? Uh, that's not the true God. The Trinity is not the true God. You do not believe in the true God. Okay? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. And look at uh, chapter 2, 11 on to verse 15 now. For the belief of God that bringeth salvation... <clears throat> Excuse me. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us to live in ungodliness and worldly lust that we shall... Excuse me! <clears throat> Excuse me! Teaching us that denying ungodliness, you disgusting fake gracer. 
Oh, we deny. We teach. Oh, uh, you listen to one of your live streams? I think perhaps maybe. No. Okay. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed hope. You know, the redemption of the purchased possession. But Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Okay? Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. This is not to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. No. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And we do. I do. With this. Okay? But Ephesians chapter 2... Okay? Verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You got that uh, uh, Dudley Do-Right twi tried to twist that, saying that, you're, that the faith that you have is actually Jesus Christ's faith. Woo! <laughs> Never really, and never answered that, but uh, focused that I put a loaded gun to my head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a hot bed waiting for you, buddy. Okay? Not of works. Works, see, that's what it's talking about. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, a new creature, unto good works as ambassadors for Christ. To be an example unto the lost, okay? Romans 12, 1 and 2, okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amos chapter 5. And see, here, here it is, here it is. When, when you as a saint start speaking about the doctrines of devils, and this nonsense that these devils are coming up with and just poisoning people and taking them to hell with them. Good day, right? Misery loves company. Amos chapter 5. This is where they, they throw at you. You hate. You hate. And I've made no bones about it. I hate Rome. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I hate what is evil. You're right. But see... I'm giving you scripture. So when you're saying, well, Brad, you called them idiots. You, dude, listen, look at me. Look at me, tough guy. You are a stupid idiot if you truly believe that hell doesn't exist and that you're going to go there and burn up for a second. You are, you're stupid. Okay? There's no kind, gentle way to put it. Sometimes... Somebody has to be cruel in order to be kind, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? You truly believe that about hell. You're lacking here, buddy, okay? You are. And see, part of the reason why I say that to you is maybe you get a little fire underneath your buttocks and then you go to the scriptures. But what happened? Well, the Greek, the Greek, the Greek. You, you shoot yourself in the foot before you even go. Because you don't like it. Why? Why? Amos 5, 10 on to 12. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And they abhor ooh, him that speaketh uprightly. Jesus called Herod a fox. Brood of vipers. Back in that day, calling someone a fox, uh, that, that was serious. And that came from God the Father. <laughs> Who will laugh when your fear cometh? Jesus, you know, remember you guys, the red words? Uh, Jesus, of which I hate. Well, he hated the sin, not the sinner, but yet God hated Esau. See, 
separate yourself them from you, separate you from them, because the Lord's in you, and they fear you. Fear you? No. They fear the Lord, who you represent because he's in you. See? That's hate. That's hate. Why? Because they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much therefore as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink the wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. They turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. <laughs> We could keep on reading, but you keep on reading for your own. Okay? Isaiah 6. See, what happens is these people, when you got someone coming around exposing what they're doing is, is, is of Satan. Okay? They don't like that. You guys like your sin. You want your cake and eat it too. You want to just believe and receive without none of that nasty repentance because, hey, you can do better. You're your own God. You're your own standard. You decide what is right and wrong, not the Lord. And so I, I don't like that rendering, so I'm going to go to the Greek and change it. Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. <laughs> Acts chapter 7, huh? Oh, you got your little feathers ruffled, huh? I warn the saints, there are saints out there who don't like it when I get angry. I, I, they're my brethren, my sisters. I love you. Sorry. You, enemies of our Lord, I have no apologies to you. You can go to hell. Especially if you're denying it. You'll find out the hard way. But Acts chapter 7, <laughs> 51, on to verse 54. Good old Stephen, who gave him a rundown, who taught them something, that, but when it came right down to it, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers whom have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. That, that, that Stephen taking a hot poker and poking at these people. That's a train of a saint. And they beheld his face. Where was it? In, uh, in 6, uh, Acts 6, 15. And they all sat in the council looking steadfastly upon Stephen that is, it doesn't say Stephen there, upon him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. They were afraid of Stephen. Why? Because the Lord's in him. Separate him from themselves. And when he gave the rundown, getting a little uppity with him, he shot at him. And of course, what happened? Verse 40, 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. So the Lord laid not the sin to their charge and then he fell asleep. Dead. There's another good tale of uh, look of scriptural forgiveness. He, was, he, he, he poked these people. They got cut to the heart, not pricked to the heart. There's a difference. And they killed them for it. Lay not this sin to their charge, Lord. I'm coming home. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. 
Nine on the sixteen. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken. Not with wine. They're stagger. They stagger, but not with strong drink. But they have the wine of Mystery Babylon. Not literal, literal physical wine are they drunk with. They're drunk in that they're deceived. And when you're drunk, your eyes will behold strange women. See, they're drunk. They're spiritually drunk. And you can go ahead and twist that into the apostasy, the, uh, uh, the uh, Pentecostal nonsense. But they have like a stupid. Let's read the scripture. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. The vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Well, you got to go to the Greek or the Hebrew. Which men deliver to one that is learned. You know, you're just a trained scholar. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Well, it's the best we have, but there is no perfect standard. The originals were inspired, but they don't exist. So we got to, you know, continually updating these things. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. I, I don't have a degree. Okay, I haven't been to cemetery. I'm not under a New Testament, <laughs> local New Testament, Bible-believing pastor. Say that five times fast. Don't. <laughs> it's not funny. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and they honor me, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their and their and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto you, or excuse me, woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us, or who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Like that idiot, bald-headed idiot from England. He's growing. Obviously, why? Because he's a, he's a shock jock. Okay? Saying over-the-top outlandish things that garner attention. And then once he has your attention, he leads you to hell, which he denies. Why can't you people see this? The Lord has closed your eyes. Why did he do that though? We'll answer that in a second. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. The false prophets that run to the front and say these outlandish, wild things. They're essentially, dude, 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 put, put, the, put the joint down. Okay, step away from the booze. Okay, what are you talking about? See, they get you. Because the Athenians like to hear nothing but a, about a new thing, remember? For, the, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the, the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? And what do we read in verse 16? Acts chapter 4. I believe it's Acts chapter 4. It's either Acts chapter 4. I, no, no, no. You're right. It's Acts chapter 5, isn't it? Yes. Acts chapter 5. Verses 38 on to verse 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. And let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be, a God, be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Just one verse. Isaiah 44. See, you people don't want truth. And you call us haters. You say it's hate when someone's... You called... Yes, look, dude, I'm not sorry. 
You're going to deny the eternality of hell, that's a word, and the horrific reality that awaits you? You're an idiot. You are. You're stupid. You are absolutely stupid. There is no fear of God before your eyes. The fear of the Lord is not in you. Okay? The Lord can send you to hell because you reject him. Well, if there's no hell, what's there to be afraid of? What's, where's your fear? There's no fear of God before your eyes. I, no, I, I regret nothing I've said of you people who reject hell. You're stupid. Okay? That's stupid. That is stupid. Void, okay, unintelligent. Idiota. Void of logic and reason. Okay? That's stupid. You deny hell. Because, for whatever reason, because you got loved ones there like I do. Okay? Or you love your sin. Worst one, you go to the Greek to try to correct what God has said. To, you know, to flippantly deny the reality of hell. You are stupid. <laughs> okay? Verse 18 in Isaiah 44. They have not known nor understood. For he has shut their eyes that they cannot see. And their hearts that they cannot understand. Why did he do this, though? He's like, Brad, you said God doesn't afford it. He doesn't. See, you have free will. And see, people that have their eyes shut by the Lord, they've made a choice somewhere to believe a lie. Isaiah 66, verses 3 on to verse 5. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth, an incense, burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea. Look at that. They have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. That's right there. You want to believe that hell doesn't exist and that it's a purgatorial thing or you burn up in a second. You want to believe that you save yourself by your own belief, that repentance is a work, calling on the name of the Lord is a work, okay? You want to believe that? That nonsense? You delighteth in your abominations. Those are all means of justifying your sin. You want what's fake? You want to lie? I also will choose their delusions. I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Here, here, here. Mic drop, as it's called. Okay? <laughs> there you go, buddy. There you go. You made your choice, free will. God doesn't force anything on you, but you choose contrary to him, oh, he's going to oblige you. Oh, he, he, he'll he oblige you real good. Uh, Romans 1, go back to Romans 1, 28 on 32. Romans 1, okay? <laughs> 28 on 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. This doesn't mean that you are unsavable, by the way. Okay? Beware of the Calvinistic reprobate doctrine. Okay? That's not true. Okay? And Stephen Anderson does it because, you know, remember Stephen Anderson. I'll put that one in the video in the description box for you. Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson's a sodomite. He's a closet sodomite that the Lord has never brought him out of because he's not saved. Okay, that's why Stephen Anderson attacks the sodomites the way he does. That's why he says sodomites can't be saved because he's, you know, about his own thing himself. The guy's a sodomite. 
I'd say that 12 inches from his face, and then he could blow me away with his AK-47, and then my wife could live off the royalties for the rest of her life. <laughs> okay. Um, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Boy, that sounds like an easy believers to me. And one of these stupid Unitarians. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, departing from evil, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them misery loves company. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2. We're almost done. This is on a, uh, was an unexpected video because we're going to have company tomorrow. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. 10 and verse 12. Oh, and by the way, this is doctrine for us today. Okay. Watch out for someone who pulls a sleazy believist move and saying that Paul is talk, uh, teaching doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, that's a big red flag. Watch out for somebody <laughs> who does that, okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The Greek... Go to the Greek. You are because you say you are. And whatever, whatever. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And what's, you know, we, the, the strong delusion thing? What is a bigger strong delusion, dear people? I, I've heard it. I, I, I remember it. It's like, well, it's the rapture. That's the strong delusion. No, it isn't. Right like the button? No, it isn't. What is the genesis of idolatry? Ye shall be as God. Ye shall be as gods. And this is supposed to be an idol, okay? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The idol is the extension of the true idol yourself. Okay? So strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You are your own God. You are your own authority. And see, when you are your own God, that bleeds into all kinds of idolatry. All kinds of lies. It starts, you shall be as gods. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 4, I, I've, I've closed in several videos with this because it's so meat. Verses 1 and verse 4. And brethren, you're going to be called a hater. Of course. Of course. Especially when you're, you're working off of the scriptures. Okay. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Oh, excuse me. Doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. God loves you! You are committing heresy when you go to a Christ-rejecting sinner and tell them God loves them. You're lying to them. You're lying to them. God's love is to be had. But when 
you tell them God loves you, you are lying. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. Itching ears. The time will come when they will not insert, uh, endure sound doctrine. Have you, haven't you figured it out? You figured it out, right? We're in that right now. <laughs> you, you people want to believe that hell doesn't exist and flippantly minimalize hell. I, I, I can't imagine the shock especially you that have heard and reject the shock that you are going to get when you stand before the Lord and you go to hell I, I, I can't imagine it verses 1 on to verse 13 then we'll be done woe to the rebellious children saith the Lord that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my Lord Kesah's spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Just believe and receive. Medical, physical, mind, science. Think it, you can achieve it. Fake it till you make it. Oh, what video was that in? That was because that was a good video. Uh, oh, which one was that? Fake it. Till, okay, I'll remember. Okay, anyway. That walk to go down into Egypt to Hoyl. Remember, instruction and in righteousness, Egypt is likened unto a type of the world. And have not asked counsel at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, Satan, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, the world. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the trust of the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Well, the Greek says this. It, it could be rendered this way. It could, yea, hath God said. Well, shut up. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. Hanes, not Hades. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them nor be an help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent, Nehushtan. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians, they of the world, you know, Christians, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. See, Christ wants you to grow, desiring the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Forgetting those things that are behind, I press forward toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus or whatever. Okay? God wants you to grow, move forward. These devils want to keep you pinned here by bringing up past failures, by keeping you dejected, unrepentant. Convinced that you're right with God while still in your sins. Now go. Write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. 
get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Don't want to hear it. Wherefore thus saith the Lord, wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. 1 Thessalonians 5, then we'll be done. 1 Thessalonians 5. <laughs> Verses 1. Oh, on to verse 11. But of the times and of the and, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. They shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep in the night, uh, sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Whom died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. That's going to be it for this video. Um, tomorrow, we are going to have some brethren, just, just for a couple of hours. Uh, they are going on a journey, a family kind of thing. And they, uh, it's actually going to be five of them, a family thing, are going to come and visit my wife and I tomorrow, sometime in the morning. So as you all know, Wednesday, we usually like to do a video on Monday, Wednesday, or whatever the Lord has. So it's like I told my wife, you know, because we talked to him, it's like, okay, brother, you know, we're excited. My wife and I, we're, we're excited when the brethren come to see us. We're given the hospitality. You know, if a brother come out of the blue from wherever, or a sister, uh, you know, come to our place, it's like, hey, here we are. So, oh, oh, oh ah, yes, come on, we'll get the coffee going. We ain't got no food, but got, got tons of rice. Uh, we'll make you something. Come on in. So, yeah, we're going to be having some brethren um, who are, we're both really looking forward to seeing. We're, we, we look forward to that kind of thing. You know, whether they come from Missouri, New Jersey, uh, it would be great if they came from Dakota, uh, North Dakota, or South Dakota, I'm sorry, brother, or are from Georgia, you know, it'd be great. Be even better if a certain uh, sister <laughs> would come from England, and we won't, we won't get involved in that. You, you know what that's about. <laughs> uh, or a brother uh, from Croatia, you know, Tell you what, boy, you get over here, right? we ain't letting you go back. <laughs> you know, it's like you show up one day at our door, it's like, hey, hello. Okay, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> we got, got a bed for you. So anyway, that's, that's uh, one of the reasons why. And plus, too, uh, you did that one comment. It's like, dude. So anyway, that's going to be it. Going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you. We love you. And uh, ain't going to be a video tomorrow. So uh, we will see you in the next video.